I really want to thank everybody for being here. I'm going to talk real quickly because, again, as Todd said, most of this session should be about you and the ideas that you have because we're trying to build a platform for all of us to work together and share with the greater Chicago area and the rest of the world the conclusions that we can come to about the best strategies to deal with the issues that are at the intersection of race and poverty. So as the, as the agenda before you says, I'm going to talk about why race and poverty.org, and I'm going to break that into three parts, which is why race and poverty, why Chicago, and why.org. So I know Chicago didn't make it into the domain. I'm going to talk about that. But so first about why race and poverty. I was hired into this position a year ago uh, for the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, and the first line on my job description said, articulate a contemporary vision for civil rights in the Chicago land area. A couple weeks ago, there was a New York Times piece suggesting that the civil rights paradigm may be a dying one, that we shouldn't just be fighting for individual rights, we shouldn't be suing. A lot of our board members even had questions about what's the role of litigation in the future for civil rights. Um, and I come from a transactional background. My primary uh, volunteer work as a lawyer when I was at law firms was with Jody and through the Law Project on our community economic development work. Um, I, I still have lots of love for the litigation and the mm -hmm. litigators, but uh, I also have a background in youth work, uh, met the folks and met Artris, uh, literally riding my bike down Michigan Avenue in 118th or 19th, wherever their headquarters is, uh, where Kids Off the Block is. So, so appreciative that so many people are here and involved. Um, but in responding to that first line on the job description, one of the first things that we did, which as an organization we hadn't done for 10 or 12 years, was to engage in a strategic planning process for the Chicago Lawyers Committee. And as we were thinking about that, one of our priorities was to ascertain what are the commitments and the, and the priorities of all the other groups that are working in the community in Chicagoland or our mainline civil rights organizations, like the Urban League, like Rainbow Push, and figure out how can we dovetail our efforts with them. We're a legal services organization, so we're about supporting the work that others do through legal services, and so we want to figure that out. So obviously our interest is heavily implicated in this, this platform that we're trying to build. Um, but second, we wanted to figure out how better to support the work of those of you who are out there in the community and on the front lines doing this work. Um, you may notice there are some legal services organizations here, but they're typically the ones working directly with clients in the community. We're going to convene a separate meeting for all the other organizations you know in the legal services community that deal with race and poverty issues. We thought we should hear from you, who are the frontline civil rights organizations and the people that are in touch with the values in the community. Um, so we thought, and that's when... We bought the domain name for raceandpoverty.org. I had been at the launch meeting with Open Hill and Let's Connect Chicago and um, the folks that uh, a year ago or more had pulled together a bunch of stakeholders to think about how Chicago builds these online communities. So I contacted Todd when we bought the domain and said, how can we work on building some kind of a collaborative thing that can bring together lots and lots of people? So then I said, the second part, why Chicago? We want to create a forum for you, an opportunity for you to share, for you to promote the work that you're doing, and for you and us to figure out how to collaborate better and how to streamline that process. But this isn't just about our organization and our priorities or your organization or even all of our organizations here in this room. I think it's a lot bigger than that, right? This is about Chicago and what's the future of Chicago in this country and in this world. We rank really high on the lists of the global cities. We're in the top 10 of just about everybody's list of global cities. But in terms of a growing economy, we're not even in the top 40 of the United States. So everyone in the civic leadership of Chicago is worried, what's our future? And yeah, I'm all down with green manufacturing and bringing back light manufacturing and figuring out smart grid for Chicago, but none of those is a silver bullet, right? And wouldn't it be great if we could discover platinum off the Gold Coast, right? Then Chicago would be the center of wealth creation for the world. But if it's not, right, if we don't find that silver bullet or that platinum bullet, I think the argument here that we're all here to push today is the idea that, in fact, what we need to be about is removing barriers to opportunity and actually streamlining the economy that we've got. Right? We've got a lot of positive things in Chicago, but we're this city that has been always ranked in the top ten of the most segregated places, the places with the most concentrated poverty. We're literally wasting lives. You know this as well as I do, that, that folks are being imprisoned at unbelievable rates, the education system is not working, the violence is taking people down, and all those things pass right through the intersection of race and poverty. And so the idea is that raceandpoverty.org 
is clearly not named Race and Poverty Chicago or Race and Poverty Law for the same reasons that the creator of Netflix said, there's a reason we didn't call it Movies by Mail, right? We knew we were going somewhere else. And I think this should be a national platform, but it should be one that's birthed right here in Chicago, that Chicago has something to offer the world. And if we're going to talk about an economic export to the rest of the country and to the rest of the world, Chicago's opportunity is to show the world how to get through those problems, how to get past those problems, and create communities and societies of opportunity and equality. And so then the last question is, then why .org, right? Why create this funky digital platform? And I think it's a response to two factors we're seeing in our world, right? One of them is the online explosion. So for the last 15 years, we've been dealing with the internet. And the power of email and the internet and texting and Twitter was always that you could not just communicate one-to-one -one or one-to-many like a television ad, but that you could also communicate many-to-one or many-to-many, -many, right? And I don't think we've all yet, I don't think I've even yet fully apprehended the ability of how that many-to-many -many communication can work and affect change. But now we're seeing these unbelievable global trends. The things we saw birthed in Tunisia and the Arab Spring and Tahrir Square and now in Occupy Wall Street are these collective impact efforts by thousands and thousands of people and multitudes of organizations. So the idea is how do we create a platform that lets us work as many organizations, and lets our organization support it legally uh, with the legal services to help organizations do what they do. How do we build that platform? And I think that's where Todd will talk about the, the media opportunity that we have. Because in this day and age, part of the conclusion is we're all media companies now, right? This is how the world works, is we have to be able to figure out how to tell our story. As I've said, I think Chicago has an unbelievable story to tell the world about getting past issues of race and poverty at that intersection. Um, but it's up to us to figure out how to do that. And so that's where I think we turn the, op the, the, the discussion over to all of you in small groups to think about how we can lift up your messages and how, as a media entity, we can create something that serves all of us.